Today I'm going to present the Rukyu Kempo Cubs. The way they're taught in the style. And we're going to do it slow so you can learn them. And in the case of some katas, we're going to do them aimed at the camera. But there are some katas where there be moves coming back to the back that you will not see. So then I will start the kata actually with my back to the camera. So you'll have to excuse that, but so that you see the moves going the other direction. I'm doing the katas in this order so you can learn them. At any time you do a kata, you never feel that the kata is totally right or exact. That's the purpose of kata. That's why katas separate karate from all other arts. The kata is the karate. The self-defense is contained within the kata. The pressure points, the mapping out of the system of the human body is contained within these kata. If you have any of my other videotapes, and I have over a dozen now on just pressure point attacking, you will see the kata maps out the angle and direction to attack nerves in the human body, to attack the weak spots, the pressure points, the acupressure points. The kata will map that out. In our way of thinking, there are no blocks in kata. None at all. None of these moves will be blocks. They are pressure point manipulation, angle and direction to attack. It's of no value to block in a kata. Your blocking is done at your dojo as part of your workout, as part of your one-step fighting, as part of your freestyle fighting. But you do not have to block when you perform a form. The blocking is done to create timing, distance, coordination. And it is of no value to block in a kata with no opponent. None at all. We will show you on other videotapes in my Pressure Point series, and in my books, I have two books out, how to use these katas to attack the human body. And as Gishin Funakoshi said in his book, Karate Do, My Way of Life, you only have to know one kata and the meaning behind that kata, the true meaning behind that kata, to understand all katas of all other styles. I want to give you a few of the points to look for in the entire Nahanchi series. There, there is an elbow strike, and the elbow is hidden behind the hand, so I want to show you that first, so you can learn the kata and the technique right. The elbow, it's a fist, as we make the fist, and the elbow is held in this manner, with the muscle group aimed forward. A lot of people I see elbow with the kata this way. That's totally a different technique. When we elbow in kata, and we elbow this way, the muscles up, or this is up, that's two different techniques you're doing on the person. In this particular kata, you elbow the hand, you elbow against the muscle, like that, and smack it in that manner to show impact or that it's a hitting technique. The fist is in this manner for that technique. The next thing to look for in the Nahanchi Kata, and I might have to cut my stance a little tight because of width room, but that the proper horse stance is taken. A horse stance is just a little wider than your shoulders. We have what we call a single wide horse stance and a double wide or an extra low horse stance. That's explained in my video tape four why we go to extra low, but it quickly, it shows you that you're doing a grappling or a takedown, so you're putting more power or pain on your opponent. Another thing that we look for in the Nahanchi Katas is that the calves are straight up and down. Only the thighs, only the thighs bend at a 45. The back should be perfectly straight through the kata. The back should be perfectly straight. The legs bend. The feet 
a little wider than your own shoulders, the toes gripping the floor, the big toes up, both big toes up, that activates both sides of your mind, that engages your mind to make you a quicker, more responsive fighter, the training is in the kata. When you do the kata, the toes are up, the feet only touch the ground with enough of feeling that you know the floor is there, but they do not sprag or drag on the floor. And you do not pick up from the floor in karate stepping. Any of the kata that you see today, we do not pick the feet up. You're off balance. If you get hit, you would be knocked down. The feet maintain contact with the floor with enough of feeling that you know where the floor is at. In the crossing of Nahanshi, only the calves should touch and lock. You should look like an hourglass coming in like that. This would be straight up and down. The calves, the thighs. Then this happens. There should be space. You should see space in a perfect crossover stance. You should see the space between the legs. This is improper. This is proper and the calves are locked that you can feel the stance, that you can stay in that stance comfortably as you cross. That stance projects your energy downward. You might have seen demonstrations where people plant their energy down and they cannot be picked up. We call that rooting. You are rooting with your mind down. You root so that you are solid and it drops the pressure on your opponent so that he goes down. You have to look for that in the Nahanchi katas or any of the katas today that require crossover. Thank you. Kata Nahanchi 1, the first kata of the Rukyu Kempo system, it involves bringing the hands together in this manner, putting the right into the back of the left, pulling the hands below your patch, and as your hands aim downward together in this manner, both feet will go from this position to that position. They will come from open to straight ahead. You look to the 45, the kata dips down to a cross stance. As you step out to a horse stance, the hand comes out to the side, the right hand, the left hand back to the hip. You attack at a 45 degree angle from your body. You catch on your hip and you look to the left. You smash down and you punch. As that smash comes down just above the knee, you'll punch, and it should be just below your patch. You'll cross stance. As you step out to a horse, as you get there, that hand should rise. The other hand will come in an X manner. You will do a back fist into the face. You'll pick up the leg, representative of a kick, and you'll hit with the hammer fist at a 45 from your body. You'll pick up on the other side, and you'll do the same thing, only you'll reverse the hammer fist. You'll catch. You'll throw both hands out. The kata 
repeat going the other direction. As this comes back to the hip, the right hand, the left hand opens. It doesn't draw a circle, it just opens. And you repeat with the smash, the catch, the downstrike, the punch. You cross, you smash up, you break. Up and 45, up and 45, catch, both hands out. This hand in both directions should be below the patch, just below your breast, not over past the body, not back too far, but right in this region, this one out with a touch of a bend. The cocky comes back, feet go together, and you point in this direction. At the complete of the kata, you pull to the hip, and as you go into a horse, both hands thrust sharply outward. That is the end of the form. Thank you. Cut in the hunchy too. Cut in the hunchy too actually starts with the hands going into a thrust forward position, 45 degrees from the body. As you do your cross stance, you pull below the breasts, and the hands and the elbows should be down. The elbows should be down. As the hands strike out in what looks like a fighting stance, as you cross, you will touch just on your arm like that as it crosses. So you might not see that technique on the camera. So we do cross, that comes over. As the hand comes out to the side, it remains there. When they come down to the hip, this is what happens, covering the fist. And as you thrust down, the hand places against here. As you do this technique, as you do it, the foot picks up, the chop, the strike. You cross, same, same technique, same technique, cross, down. As this does this, the foot picks up, chop, strike, cross, here, here, ki, hold, Cut in the hunchy three is the hands thrust out. As you go into the first position, you drop into the double wide horse stance that I told you about. The hands come up in that manner. They cross like a little windshield wiper. Over to the patch back, and it, it does a reverse punch, but then it comes out 
with the punch underneath like this. So you do a punch upside down, and you come here, and you come here. As you cross, and you go out to the side, you'll come down, just like that. Come down with the hand remaining, and you'll punch. You do a break from there, another break, and hit, and underneath. Hand goes in that position, and you cross, over, down, cross, out, down, punch, up, 45 across the body, body turns to the 45, as you go back, you go straight away, cross the hands, up. The Tamari Te of the old Kakas have a lot of this in because they strike with that lead hand. They take moves down and strike them up with that lead hand. Cut a pin on one. Some styles call these cutters the heon also, by the way. So don't confuse the name. I'm going to turn my back to the camera, but only so you can see the other moves of kata pinan one, or from the reverse side, in case you attempt to learn this kata. Cut a pin on one. Cut a pin on two. And again, pin on two, my butt end. Cut a pin on three.
Paint on three. Back to the camera. There are three steps. Front stance, horse stance, then the turn. Cut a pin on three. Cut a pin on four. Got a pin on four, reverse angle. Got a pin on five. Pin on five, reverse angle. Got a say song, the original Tamari or old version. Gotta say something. The old Tamari version reverse angle.
kind of by side. Cut by side, reverse angle. Kind of cool sound cool. Kusan Ku, reverse angle.
cut a Nisei shoe. Cut the Nisei Shi, reverse angle. Keep in mind when you do kata that the floor space associates the mind and the body together. In other words, you're training the feet when you do kata to feel. That's why the foot doesn't pick up. And you will associate the mind and the foot. You'll get this coordination as the feet move between the mind and the feet. When people do kata in tournament, it's different than in the dojo. The dojo, they can do it at a slower speed to break the technique down, and then they should wear off and uh, work and pair off on breaking these techniques down. Also in kata, there is that kia, that when you hit. And that can be at any place in the kia, in the kata. We kiai only once, maybe twice in the kata, no more than three times. That is general rule of thumb for kata. You don't just key eye everywhere. Most of the sensei would key eye on their favorite technique or the one they felt within them, the shout, the spirit. In the dojo, we all key eye at the same spot for uniformity, because you cannot have 30 people key eye wherever they feel like it. But when I do my kata alone, which I train every day with my kata, I do my kata alone, I can ki at any given point that I just feel that particular technique. There is no place in a kata to ki -ai. Kata will associate the mind, the body, the feet. If you do the kata and then work on breaking these techniques down, the pressure points, then as you do the kata, you are enhancing your self-defense. As you pair off to do self-defense, you are improving or enhancing your kata. Thank you. At Dilma Karate International, I teach the katas in the order in which I'm going to do them. We're doing a two-tape set. We have the Ruku Kempo Katas on this tape that you're watching. And then we're going to do another tape with the Katas of the Rukus. I teach Katas in a different order for a reason that will be explained on the next tape. But so that we have them for the different belt ranks, we integrated the actual old Tamari Katas in with our katas. I teach the katas in the order in which I learned them. And that's what you should do as a black belt. They don't have to be in any, in a particular order. For instance, the way they do it in Rukyu Kepa when they teach the Hanchi one, two, and three first, I personally feel that that's wrong because those katas are the hardest to learn. 
you give a student the most difficult stepping in forms to do first when he hasn't learned a basic front stance or a basic side stance. The way we teach the katas, for ninth Q white belt, kata tayuka one, two, three, kata tayuka one, Tayuka 4 and 5, we teach actually later on. I just teach them as a, a uh, like a uh, seminar kata, or we'll teach you somewhere at green belt or brown belt. You need Tayuka 1, 2, and 3 to get your uh, green stripe. Actually, Tayuka 1 to get your green stripe, and then for your yellow belt, Tayuka 2 and 3 and say some. And then Tayuka 4 and 5 come later, I'm just going to do them now on the tape. We start everyone at ninth degree or ninth Q white belt. To get your green stripe, which is eighth Q, you need just Tayuka one and other requirements, your blocks, your punches, your kicks. Then to get to that's the eighth, then to get to seventh or your yellow belt, we use Tayuka two, Tayuka three, and the say song that you saw. That'll be taught on the next day. To get to blue belt, the sixth Q. We do this kind of siyunji.
There's a proper place to breathe and not breathe in kata. When we teach the katas, we teach them in the order that we do to train the feet, to train the body, to train the internal and external muscle. That's what karate is all about, training the internal muscle. And that must be done with the breathing and the breath control of the next kata, sun chin. For our green belt, you must learn the hanchi, which we showed you earlier on this tape, and this kata, sun chin. When you do the breathing, in kata seisan, we take a breath on every step that trains the beginner. At the end of Seisan, though, there's three portions in which you must hold the breath out. That training will be on the next page. But you must hold the breath out to do the kata. Then in Siyuchin, you only get to breathe three times in the kata. In the Hanchi, you don't breathe at all. You push out and you maintain that equal balance of out and in to train the stomach. Then in Sanchin, you master the breathing because the air must come from here, not from the throat. We feel the stomach that the air is leaving from here. And then from then on, the student knows how to do the breathing and can put it in his kata, wansu, chinto, wherever it is needed. Kata san chin. I just explained you needed the Hanchi and Sun Chin for your green belt. For your blue belt, you needed Siu Chin, but you also needed combinations. For your green belt, you need fighting, your freestyle fighting, in addition to the Kata. Wan Tzu is next for your purple belt. That is a very patterned Kata on the floor, but the Wan Tzu Kata, along with improved or advanced combinations, that involve pressure points are needed for your purple belt, your fourth cube. the katas, the last kata, Wansu, we also let the student choose at that point whether he wants to do Wansu or Basai, the version that was on this tape. That gives me a divide. I get two sets of people going for Purple Belt, but one's learning the Wansu, one's learning the Basai. And then when we go, which we still do tournament competition, we go to tournament competition, and if they're competing in kata, they're not all doing the same kata. Somebody can do Basai, somebody wants to, somebody uh, Siyuchi and Seisan. And then we test for the brown belt, and you must learn kata chinto for third Q. Kata chinto.
Kara Kusan Ku, which is on this day, is needed for second Q, brown belt. So third Q, brown belt was Chinto. Second Q is Kusan Ku. First Q, you do a kata called Suan Su, or you have a choice of two weapons. Bow inside, nunchucks inside. You must learn two weapons katas to get your black belt. So you can learn a weapon now, and you might have learned a weapon in the green belt area, like a seminar. But when you get to first queue, you either do suan su or two weapons. You get your first queue. I will do suan su. Then I would supposedly do the two weapons for my black belt. If I chose the two weapons, they would be here for first queue. So I, my testing would involve two weapons katas. And then to get my black belt, I would do suan su, which you will see now. I explained to get the first degree black belt, you needed the past cut of so and so, and or two weapons. To get the second degree black belt, you already would know the requirements of this tape because second degree black belt or Nidon is the five Pinon goddess, but you must be breaking them down with the Tuite, the Kyushu Jitsu, the pressure points, and the Hanji two. To get the third degree black belt, you must learn the Hanji 3. So I do not teach you early on. I teach the katas, the order I learn them. I teach them up in the Don rank because I can work deeper level of pressure points with my students based on those katas. So the Hanji 3 is a third Don, and this kata, kata empe.
master's rank, a fourth degree black belt. That is the first of the masters. In your black belt, you have first don, second don, third don. They're just black belts. Four, five, and six are master. Seven, eight, nine, grand master. Ten, supreme master. One, two, three, and four, you're a master. This kata is needed at the fourth degree black belt and or getting into fifth degree black belt. For fifth degree black belt, in my system, you need kinken, kata kinken, which I plan to break down on another tape. And then I plan to do the full breakdown with it, like I did the Basai tape or the Nahanti tape early on in my tape series. Kata go to Shiho.